welcome to Deeply Rooted. This is Robin Norgren, and I'm here uh, giving you another segment from my series called What to Look For um, in a Spiritual Director and What Does It Mean to Have Spiritual Direction? Before I begin, I would like to start by giving you some questions to think about. How do you listen attentively to God? Is there a certain place? Is there a certain time of day? Um, Are there certain just environment or circumstances that are put in place to allow for this to be a time that you're doing regularly? And if so, are those uh, set of um, scenarios Are they working for you? This would be one of the reasons why you would look for a spiritual director. Mm -hmm. Let me give you some thoughts. People who desire deep and authentic Mm -hmm. spiritual lives often ask for help. And therefore, it is of great value to submit your prayer life from time to time to the supervision of a spiritual director, counselor, or guide. We are seeking spiritual direction when we are asking Mm -hmm. the right questions and desiring Mm -hmm. to deepen our spiritual life in God. Some people may feel the need for a regular and extensive sharing with a spiritual director, Mm -hmm. while others find an occasional meeting to be sufficient. So these would be things to keep in mind if you're still on the fence as to whether or not having spiritual direction would add value to your spiritual Mm -hmm. life. Here's a segment from a book called Spiritual Direction by Henry Nouwen. The basic question, who am I, resurfaces throughout life. An old Talmudic tale sheds light on the true identity and value of each and every human being at the deepest level. This story is called The Fugitive and the Rabbi. One day, a young fugitive trying to hide himself from the enemy entered a small village. The people were kind to him and offered him a place to stay. But when the soldiers who sought the fugitive asked where he was hiding, everyone became very fearful. The the soldiers threatened to burn the village and kill every person in it unless the young man was handed over to them before dawn. The people went to the rabbi and asked him what to do. Torn between hiding, between handing over the boy to the enemy and having his people killed, the rabbi withdrew Mm -hmm. to his room and read his Bible, hoping to find an answer before dawn. In the early morning, his eyes fell on these words. Mm -hmm. It is better that one man dies than that the whole people be lost. Then the rabbi closed the Bible, Mm -hmm. called the soldiers, and told them where the boy was hidden. After the soldiers led the fugitive away to be killed, Mm -hmm. there was a feast Mm -hmm. in the village because the rabbi had saved the lives of the people. But the rabbi did not celebrate. Overcome with a deep sadness, he remained in his room. That night, an angel came to him and asked, What have you done? He said, I have handed over the fugitive to the enemy. Then the angel said, But don't you know that you have handed over the Messiah? How could I know? The rabbi replied anxiously. Then the angel said, If instead of reading your Bible, you had visited this young man just once and looked into his eyes, you would have known. Are we not challenged in daily life to look deeper into the eyes of the people we encounter? Even those who are running away from something? And to see in them the face of God? Mm -hmm. Perhaps just knowing that they too are beloved children of God will be enough to prevent us from handing them over to the enemy. Mm -hmm. 
Are we not also challenged and encouraged to look more deeply at the way God sees us? Beloved, accepted, affirmed, worthy of salvation? Are we, like the fugitive, reflections of the Messiah? I want to leave you with some questions to reflect on as we finish up this time together. If you imagine yourself as a beautiful but unformed block of marble, what would God need to chip away to reveal the lion inside you? Thanks so much for stopping by.